we won't go through the whole CV because we are starting a little bit late, but she will say a little about herself. And then we're gonna get into the questions um, that we have. And today's topic, uh, we're gonna do the usual breathing exercises and, and, and all that, but we just decided to launch in fully uh, into the conversation because we're starting a little bit late. Apologies for that. Uh, uh, welcome to all those who are joining us. Uh, the topic for today is transformations in uh, tradition, religion, and spirituality. There is usually a convergence in these uh, topics. When someone speaks about religion, they think, well, it's the same as spirituality. And some people take their traditions in a similar way as they take their spirituality. They are spiritual traditions. People, people speak of spiritual traditions. Uh, for us, it can be natural. Please switch off your mic. Uh, and please switch off your mic uh, if you are so that we can um, uh, have one conversation and not be disrupted. Uh, but there will be time for, for questions. There will be time for comments towards the end of this uh, session. Um, what we usually do before we start, you know how, how it is. Yes. Uh, I'm not sure whether you're going to do the pledge today. Uh, we're just going to, with Dr. Lina, maybe just close our eyes and take a little few breaths. So we close our eyes and we take one deep breath in. And hold it. And let it out. Take a deep breath in. Just take a moment of silence to welcome the divine energy, our ancestors, our creator in our space, so that we may be guided by the Almighty, guided by the Divine Ones, guided by the light in the work that we are doing. Breathe in again. Relax your mind and be present in this space. You let go. Can you just relax a little bit? And you think about the subject matter think about spirituality, we think about our ancestral traditions, even our modern traditions, and about what does it mean to be transformed and to allow transformation to happen in your life and not to be restrictive of change. And then we welcome everyone into this space. So, Dr. Mm -hmm. Lin, welcome. We finally meet. Oh, yes, definitely. We finally yes. meet after some time. Yes. Talking. We've been talking. We've yeah. been virtual friends for a very long time. Yes, yes. Yes, yes we, we give thanks. So, I think I'd, I'd like to allow you to just introduce yourself. Okay. Mm. Um, I'm Lina. Mm -hmm. um, born in Soweto, grew up in different parts of the world. Um, having lived in the United States, in the UK, and in Asia, mm. and there's no place like home. Mm. No place like <laughs> yeah, Africa. there's no place like Africa. So I came back home, and I've been home um, ever since. Um, I'm a mother of two kids, a 16-year-old and a five-year, very energetic. <laughs> Um, Love her. daughter. <laughs> <laughs> it's full of life. Yeah, and um, I'm a community development specialist. I'm a healer, and I'm a doctor mm -hmm. at the same time. Okay. So I wear different hats at different times, but in all those hats that I'm wearing, um, I'm always bringing healing in different mm -hmm. ways and different methods. Yeah. Uh, speaking of different hats, you mentioned that you are also a community worker. What's that like um, doing community work? Um, and in which um, sphere, sectors are you doing community work? So many. Yes, um, it's mostly through education and skills development 
that I do community work. I'm, I'm fortunate to be using other people's money <laughs> to do what I love, um, having a background in the mining industry. So I consult for different mining houses. Yeah. And then I've also consulted for various law firms um, who want to give back to the community, but don't know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then they will approach me to actually help them in doing that. And I also see that as a form of healing. Social investment. It's social, investment. yeah, but it goes deeper than that because mm -hmm. you meet people who had no hope and suddenly they have hope. Mm -hmm. And you see how they transform um, from not having bread, not having hope, to being this blossoming person who's hopeful and can see their dreams actually happening. Mm -hmm. So that's the other side of healing that I bring to communities. Um, mm. Apart from that, I use sports. Um, there's a program called Sports for Social Change, where we bring social cohesion through sports, whether it's soccer, whether it's rugby, netball, but we bring communities who otherwise would never come together mm. through sports to start seeing their differences as common things that they have um, because sports is a universal language yes whether you can speak um, English or not Music. yes mm. so you can get in there and be your best and walk out with best friends that you never thought you would actually make through sports so that's why we call it sports for social change yeah this is this is extremely important in fact sports people have to be are very healthy i mean you watch your health a lot you watch what you eat yes. you watch what you i mean you exercise you when you when you're engaged in sports you are actually engaged in a form of self-healing but at mm -hmm. the same time you're also reaching out to both entertain others and inspire them to live a healthy life and also heal yourself hmm as you play mm. because mm. as you play you want to become your best mm. and when your best is out there there's points of you that get healing so healing comes in so many different ways it's just that we think you need to drink something to mm. be healed mm. Mm. or you need to go and see someone in order to be healed yes. but you can bring healing in so many different um, ways and sports is one of them um, I love to dance. Mm. When I'm on the dance floor, I'm a different person altogether. And I can walk out feeling very different. And, and, and not just from being refreshed, but from being elsewhere. You know, mm. dance takes you to another world. It's the it's same as people who love reading. Mm. They travel through the book and they become healed and, mm. and pick up things in the book that brings so much healing to them. Mm. So, yeah. Mm. Okay, let's get into these other questions now, the questions that are on the topic, uh, on the uh, subject line. Mm. Uh, we were thinking about, well, the, the season that we are in, because uh, in Ikambi, mm. we use uh, what we call chemetic or ancient African cosmology. Mm. And in that cosmology, we are in the season of Anku. Anku is known as this jackal or dog-headed uh, deity uh, who is the watcher, who watches over um, matters of death and life and the grave and resurrection and judgment and things like that. But uh, he is also known as someone who deals with the uh, with the uh, uh, spirituality, mm -hmm. right? So what is, in your opinion, the role of spirituality in one's health? In one's holistic. In one's holistic health. Health. Um, let me start by saying what is spirituality? Yes, a definition. And what makes spirituality different from religion? Yeah. What are the differences? There's, there's different definitions for spirituality. My one is that spirituality is a personal experience, the direct personal experience. Why I say that is that how you experience spirituality is very different 
to how I experience it. And the reason being is because we are all spiritual beings. Mm -hmm. We're just trying to cope with the human awakening. Mm -hmm. I say that because there's some of us who've traveled to places that we've never been before, but when you get there, you are so familiar with the place. Mm -hmm. you, you know the smell, you know how to maneuver and get around, yet you've never been there. Mm -hmm. And people will say it's deja vu. It's not. Mm -hmm. That's your personal direct contact. And that is your spirituality showing that this is who you are. Like genetic memory or something. It, it goes deeper than that because it's, it's places that in the human form, you, you, you kind of battle with and how to bring that into your own space. So that is why I'm saying it is personal direct experience because everyone experiences spirituality differently. Mm -hmm. And spirituality is more so to say who you are and why you are here and what is the purpose. Mm -hmm. to tap into you. Into your own purpose. Yes, into your own purpose and, and, and remind you why you are here because some of us are not here for the first time. Mm -hmm. Some mm -hmm. of us are not even here for the second time. Mm -hmm. And some of us come here different races. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. where you've been a different race before and suddenly you tap into that and you Wake up. wake up yeah but people and it's not always easy no it's not easy and there's so many pitfalls um into spirituality because if it catches you and you are not ready that's where the problem starts because you don't know which direction to take mm. the pitfalls are not having the understanding because I doubt these families who sit around and say, today we are going to talk about spirituality. Mm. What happens? They live it. Yes, they live it, but some don't want to live it because they've experienced it before and the experience was not a great one. Mm. And that's when you will hear them say, I went see you all over time. You're the first one to ever do mm. that. It's because you really don't want to go deep. That's when the tradition part enters there. Because it's like, it is no linked. One see what, this is not done. Yeah. No one has done what you're doing. Exactly. Why You're the you first this? ones. But mm -hmm. remember, all of us, we are not the first ones. Mm -hmm. It doesn't start with us. Mm -hmm. It started somewhere. Mm -hmm. But because the experiences have been different, mm -hmm. that is why it ends up being said, mm -hmm. you're the first one, yet you are not. Mm -hmm. You're just showing everybody this is who we once were, mm. or this is who we are, mm. and this is the path that we need to take in order for things to happen the right way. Mm. Mm. And also what's wrong with introducing newness? There's nothing wrong with introducing newness. It's, it's how we cope with it. Mm. It's how we accept it and make it a part of us. Hence I said holistic mm. because for some people, it then suddenly means you can no longer eat meat. And mm. when you're thinking, God, they need to why it's suddenly? Yes. Mm -hmm. That personal direct experience that says, for you to be able to do this kind of work or live in this world mm -hmm. amongst others, you need to let go of such certain things. You, 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 you touch on a very important part there. You keep mentioning holistic. You practice uh, both Western and uh, African and universal. When I read your bio, I'm thinking, where do we start with this woman? Because she is got experience in various fields. So in the practice, in your practice of both Western and uh, uh, I would say Southern Hemispheric, <laughs> uh, hemispheric uh, healing practices, what, what differentiates them? What makes them seem like they are polar opposites? What makes them seem different? What makes them different is the approach mm. and the fundamentals of them. Mm. Every person is holy, mm. meaning you've got 
blood flowing through your veins. When you're sick, you've got mucus, that's water. Um, you become hot or you become cold. So the elements are in you and therefore they need to be balanced. Hence, it has to be holistic. So when anybody comes to me and they say, I have a headache, I always want to know the source of the headache. Why do you have a headache? Where is the headache? Is it on the sides? Is it on the forehead? Is it on top? Mm. Is it at the back? Mm. Is it on the, What's like, the cause? What is the cause? What is the root cause? And that's what holistic means because you are now delving deep into the matter. You're not just looking at the symptom. Whereas other practices, I have a cold. Oh, okay, mm. it's a runny nose. It's and a that's it. thing. It's a yeah. issue. It's but a issue. Um, sometimes it's not even it. You don't, your body does not digest sugar. Therefore, it's going to come out as if you have a flu mm. or a cold. Mm. Or you've been stressed out. You have not been well hydrated. Mm. And then it presents itself as something else. So that's where the holistic comes in. And that's where the difference is, where I don't just say you have a headache and therefore um, go drink this or smoke this and then you're fine. No, I need to get to the bottom of it mm. so that you don't have these constant headaches. You need to deal with them. You need to be able to operate whether you've got what I've given you or not because you'll now have tools of when I have this headache, what do I need to do? I have to sit down, breathe. I need to press, make sure the flow is different. Because mm -hmm. then as it pounds, as you press and you put pressure, it slowly releases and it goes away. But then you have to sit down and think, why did I have this headache? Mm -hmm. What just happened? But this knowledge, where, where, where does one obtain? I mean, where do I know where to press? Where, how do I know that it's not just a neurophysical thing? I've got a toothache and then the vein, whatever, you know? Because I understand holistic, what, mm -hmm. what you just explained, the way you've explained holistic health, mm -hmm. or holistic healing. Mm -hmm. But then when an issue is really physical, mm -hmm. then what are the things that one should know it's never just physical. Mm, the physical is what? Just the mani out outward manifestation? Yes. Um, there's physical, there's emotional, and there's spiritual. Okay. So often we don't know ourselves okay. enough to know, is this now emotionally linked, spiritually, or physically? Mm. And you go to a doctor and they say, there's nothing wrong with you. What do you mean there's nothing wrong with me? I'm sick. <laughs> and you are genuinely sick. Mm. You are. And that's where I say, when you come to me, the first thing is, I look at how you walked into the room. What? Yes. Just the walking? Yeah, the body language okay. tells me quite a lot. Um, I, I, I look at your expression. Mm. Are you in pain and where is the pain coming from? Mm. I think I'm blessed in the sense that I was trained to do that. Mm. Um, and then when you sit down, how do you sit? Do you sit lounging? Do you sit? Mm. Do you sit? Like yes, what's going on? I look at all of those things because each one tells a story about what is going on. It's quite holistic. Yeah. Okay. Um, you see, we already said that we, as in the season, uh, we are dealing with a, 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 a natural power yeah. that is focused on transformation, uh, uh, the, the, going through the various phases of life, both from life to death and all that, and back. As you keep referring to the fact that some of us are not here for the first time. Yes. Um, I am wondering if one is hoping to understand their spiritual transformation while still alive, are there any 
like herbs or any um, element, like natural elements that one can use in order to enhance that experience rather than maybe just listening to someone and maybe taking the advice. Are there any uh, herbal medicines or anything that can be used to I think the first, assist the situation? The first thing that you use is yourself. Mm. Who am first. I? Self-knowledge. Yeah. Who am I? Um, what am I about? Because a lot of people struggle with that. Um, can you be deceived? I'm sorry to throw it. You can be that. deceived. Can you be deceived by yourself? You can be deceived by yourself because there will be different voices telling you who you are until you get to the bottom of who you are. Okay. Because some questions are very hard mm. in terms of answering them. Um, Envelope. Yeah. Envelope, and you know. So I always say the best healer, I can give you herbs, I can give you tools, mm. but you are your own best healer. Mm. You need to be honest with yourself in answering those questions. Mm. And it's okay to say, I don't know who I am and cry about it. Mm. To say, I don't know who I am because I've been different people. Remember as a teenager, as Fefe, the five-year-old, mm. this is who she is. She's battling. Mm. Is she a boy or girl? Mm. Mom, are you my mom or not? Mm. When she gets to that stage, oh, I understand you. You are my mom. You've got rules mm. and why. And then you get to your 20s where you're entering woman or manhood mm. and maturity. You start asking those questions because now you have to answer those questions for yourself, about yourself. And then I come along as your friend and I say, no, that's not who you are. Remember in high school, but you've evolved. You're no longer that high school person. Mm -hmm. So then you need to sit alone and have that meeting with yourself and really ask the question, who am I? We are always in conflict as people. And that conflict comes again with that personal direct experience. Because some people experience spirituality earlier on in life than they do later in life. Okay, all right. Um, I wish I knew what that means, <laughs> what I was saying there, but I, I don't. But I, I'm gonna guess. <laughs> yeah, so uh, the next question basically will be, it, it's still on the same, issue of tools, the same question of tools, what, what are the tools that we can use? Um, the question is, uh, are there any other plans that you can recommend? Of course there are lots You of would plans. like to recommend, are there any that you can recommend now for those who are under, who need that spiritual connection and are undergoing, uh, you know, but because we we're, were looking at things like ayahuasca and iboga and all these, uh, a person like some people, would be like, ah, that's a bit extreme mm -hmm. kind of medicine. Mm -hmm. Some people can take it, some people can take it. Mm -hmm. But are there any that you can recommend for someone who is entering the stage and then undergoing that? I think the, the most simplest and the ones where we can access immediately, also depending on your family background, not everybody can burn in pepper. Yes. But you can drink chamomile. Okay. Which is still Does it serve the same purpose. Serves the same purpose because now remember, when you want to get in into self, you need to be silent. Mm -hmm. What does impepo bring? It brings silence, right? Mm -hmm. It cleanses the air, mm -hmm. opens you up, opens your mind, mm -hmm. right? For those who can't burn it, because it's prohibited mm -hmm. in their family. In their family. Mm -hmm then you can move to chamomile and drink it's the same thing it's just that you're going to drink it you're going to be all calmed out and you know and often for some people it can happen directly as we are sitting now for some it will happen in their sleep the other thing um if you're not allergic to it lavender lavender Mm, one of my sisters is allergic. <laughs> <laughs> so lavender, you can bath with it. Yes. 
you can apply it on oil. your yes as an essential oil on the temples you can apply it on your feet before you go and sleep you can apply it on your chest or your back it brings that calmness again okay. and then the other one is again um i wouldn't suggest for everyone cannabis mm -hmm. why do i say i wouldn't suggest for everyone it's because different families react differently to cannabis. Mm. There are families who just cannot smoke cannabis mm. for reasons being. Psychologically and otherwise. We get to the psychological part because cannabis, similar to in paper, can be used to invoke mm. or summon mm. those people in our families. Mm. And if you're not ready to deal with them, Mm -hmm. That's when they say there's a psychological effect mm -hmm. or there is hallucination and you see people talking to people mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. having taken cannabis and there's no one there. Meanwhile, others are just calm. Others are just calm. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it all depends. And for some people, it would be good just to drink it okay. instead of smoking. There's various ways. There's various they ways. Yeah, but like you, you, it's it's always good to know who you are and if this has an effect in your family psychologically or not. Okay. So you, how do you get to know, get all that knowledge? You just simply, if you ask your mother, I'm changing time. Yeah, because you ask your grandfather, it, be like, hey, I see you in like that. You remember what I said? For some families, it evokes mm -hmm. certain emotions. Mm -hmm. It summons mm -hmm. different people that we don't want to deal with. So like hi. Whereas for some people, you're just gonna be silent. I mean meditate. It's meditative when you sleep. Mm -hmm. And then apart from drinking and using herbs, find the right music. The music. Yes. Yeah. Very important. Very important. Find the right music. And when you wanna get there, you also need to say what your intentions are. Because remember, spirituality can go either way, hey? Mm -hmm. There's the good and there's the bad. Speaking of which, while we're still on that cannabis plant, um, you, you, you work with the cannabis plant. Mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit more about your journey with the cannabis plant. Maybe on a very personal and maybe <laughs> slightly historical. Yes. Yeah, I want to know. Kali Ganjai, I grew up in a family where enzyme is used for different things. Okay. Um, that's where I learned which you could use cannabis to summon okay. our parents. Yeah. Yes. Without smoking it, just burning it in the house, mm -hmm. you know, going all around. Um, and then my smudging. mom. Yeah, you're smudging, but you're also opening for the good ones to come in. Okay. Remember, even when you summon, you have to say, who are you asking? Asking. Mm -hmm. Because Likona is those lady that you're going to summon, the next thing they bring havoc into yes. the family yes. because you had no idea that who mm -hmm. screw. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes. Sorry for the word. Gangster but laws. Yes, mm -hmm. the gangster laws, mm -hmm. that just makes everybody crazy. Mm -hmm. um, so you need to know the intention and, and, and know why you're using it. And then secondly, my mom was a traditional healer only time she smoked cannabis was when we knew Utipumithos Naramkulu. And Mkulu of Mkulu and say what needs to happen or what is happening or what is not right or what is right. And he came to thank us for all of that. So then my aunt, um, she used cannabis for everything. Mm. She made oil. Um, there were times when we didn't buy Vaseline and stuff like that. She mm -hmm. made it for ourselves. From cannabis. From cannabis extract. So similar to Mtlafora, where you make mm -hmm. the, the oil from the, 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 the plant. So they would make that for us. I mean, until today, I use either hemp lotion mm -hmm. or lotion that's made from cannabis. Mm -hmm. And I also make products okay. um, from cannabis. We know that cannabis is good for asthma. We know cannabis is good for people with epilepsy. Mm -hmm. We know cannabis is very good for people. Um, it's a bronchodilator. 
Mm -hmm. um, it has so many uses apart from smoking. Mm -hmm. um, I remember my aunts taking the stem from the cannabis tree mm -hmm. and you know, making weaving, weaving stuff mm -hmm. from it. Mm -hmm. So in my family, cannabis has been used in many different ways. Multi and yeah, it's multi-purpose. And it's one of the best herbs if you are making a mixture and you don't know how to balance, mm -hmm. you can put in cannabis mm -hmm. to bring the balance in the mix. So it's, it's, it's a very special plant. I can go on and carry on. <laughs> No, we, uh, on we often joke that we do not like to recommend things uh, in such a as a Zulutia Muzi for Zonke. Yes. That uh, this thing is gonna deal with all your all your problems. Mm -hmm. If you've got a stomach ache, it's cannabis. No, no, Headache, no, 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 cannabis. No, 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 no. But but you know, we yeah. were saying the same thing about aloe. Yes. We said the same thing about moringa in some in some places. We just and said about Karana. lavender. And that, love it, that yeah, too. not everyone can. Mm. And the reason I'm speaking about the issue of pussy for some case because, again, I keep returning to the issue of anbu. Uh, anbu is a uh, related with decomposition. I, would, oh, I, I mentioned that he's the god who watches over the dead mm -hmm. uh, 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 and also the living, so that the living can conduct themselves in a certain way, so that they, when the body decomposes. Mm -hmm the spiritual aspect of you travels uh, yes. smoothly in, in, in the underworld. But one of the characteristics of Anbu is the digestion, the issue of digestion. Yes. Which, if I have digestive problems, Probably. like let's say like I get constipated or maybe I get um, certain digestive issues Jay, that mm -hmm. are persistent. What are the, 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 the herbs in general that are good for the digestive tract or the digestive system? Cumin. 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 Isn't it a spice? It is. A, well, it's a herb okay. that has been turned into a spice. And how would you use cumin? Um, you can boil cumin and make it into a tea. Okay. It's also good for um, mm. gum disease. For gum. Yes. Same as um, clove. Yes. Okay. So cumin, clove, turmeric, black pepper. Okay. So, so all the, these are kind of like black besides the turmeric. Yes. Like black seeds. Yes. So they're very good for the digestive system. Um, mm -hmm. But they also bring different types of healing within the body. So I cook with all of these herbs, your ginger. Um, I like to mix turmeric and pepper, black pepper, because then it can absorb, it can be absorbed inside. It's quite a potent drink. It is, but you can cook with it. You don't always have to drink it. Okay. Remember, these are herbs that have been turned into spices, okay. which you can cook with to help with the digestive system. Okay. But the best thing ever, if you suffer from digestion, when you go to bed, sleep on your left. Sleep on your left hand side mm -hmm. until you get to a point where you feel I need to burp. Get up a bit, release, sleep. No problem with that. Burp or Susan? <laughs> Whichever <laughs> one. <laughs> Whichever one. The air must come out. Yeah, the air must yeah, just come the out best. and then you're okay. okay. But sleeping on your left side is the best. All right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let us turn a little bit to our audiences and see if there's any questions or comments from our audience. Are there any questions from our audience? Okay, um, they are there, we can just look at them. Um, I will read them to you. Uh, so someone says, Lebohan, Lebohan says, Miss Lina, am I correct to say sickness is caused by either emotional, spiritual, or psychological issues that then manifest into physical pain? All of them. All sicknesses. There's no balance. I'm sorry if I just, uh, gee, There's no such. I ate the wrong thing. <laughs> What's spiritual about me eating the wrong thing? No, she's not just oh, saying poison. spiritual. She's saying spiritual or psychological issues. Okay. Right? All right. So let me give me, for example, um, I lost my voice mm. the other day and I had to ask myself what happened. 
I was doing so much in that week. I did not sleep enough, mm. number one. I did not debrief after having so many issues. Mm. I never sat down and say, let me unpack which one am I going Led to do? Yeah, what? So it was only when I looked in the mirror and I said, you don't look good. What happened? I was stressed out. Mm. I've been traveling. Mm. I've not been sleeping properly. Mm. I've been having bad dreams. All of that can bring sickness and illness because I'm not balanced. Mm. I'm not eating right. I'm not drinking water, you know? So psychologically, I was not okay. Emotionally, because of the stress, mm. I was not okay. What then happened is I lost my voice. I started having a runny nose. Mm. Did I really have a flu? Mm. No. <laughs> which was, which shocked me when I spoke to you, your, your voice was so clear. I was like, hey, this person had no voice that day. Yes. And she's dealt with it. It's totally um, yes. Gone. So I, I went back and I asked myself what's going on, you know? Um, that is why I'm saying it's so important to know yourself. Mm and to know what's going on in your life, then you will be able. That is why I'm saying, I can give you all the herbs, I can give you the tools, but if you don't know yourself and you don't know what's going on in your life, you're always gonna be sick. And when you go to doctors, they're gonna say, there's nothing wrong with you. Mm, they're not gonna find it with their stethoscopes. It's, yeah, there's nothing wrong. And then you end up in the wrong hands. And then the, you get told, hi, one man would twice. I was born here. I was born Yes. You get someone else to tell you this instead of you. Often because you don't happens. know about yourself. It, because you don't know about yourself. You don't Doctors know take you who you are. You and you one. get operated and you don't need one. And then you come to Gogo who is on some, oh, okay. Doctors haven't seen anything. You don't know what's going on. I think about pants, my Sally pants is high school. Maybe. We'll get back to that one. Okay. Please hold that thought because I would like to touch on that one. Uh, I would like to continue uh, Lebohang's uh, question because it's got uh, the question part and it's got kind of like an explanation. Okay. Well, she was, it's a, it's a continuation. Okay. So she says, yesterday I was so angry about something that I let it all out. This morning I woke up with a saw, with a saw on my tongue and I have been thinking how this saw relates to how I felt yesterday. I still don't know, don't have an answer. However, I, be, I believe they relate. That's interesting. Yeah. What you, for me, what I'm finding that there is an element of knowing yourself mm -hmm. here because there's introspection happening. Yes. How does it relate? Say, yes. And I was not okay. Mm -hmm. And what did not make you okay? What did you lash out? Mm -hmm. What does tongue. the tongue do? Yes. The tongue. What does the tongue do? And now, whatever it is that she had said, whether she meant it or not, right? Nyakuz wala Don't say such things. That's not who you are. And interestingly, you related your stress and your not eating right to losing My voice. your voice, yes. the throat again. Yes. So quite interesting, the linkages. Mm -hmm. Is there any other question or comment from the audience? At the moment, none. Okay. Um, just maybe one more question for me, for, for you, uh, because I think we've exhausted most all of them. Uh, but I just want to go back to this issue of uh, you were the, the tradition issue, the tradition and spirituality. You explained it quite well. Is it possible for traditional practice to cause people to be ill? any traditional practice is okay it's done at home this is how we've been doing it at home but could it be wrong or could it be causing someone to be ill in a way it's possible especially if you don't understand the people's tradition mm. nor their culture and also if you have not asked for permission mm. to assist how do you ask permission you come to me. Pentecostals at my house. I don't know how to ask permission in a traditional way. Okay, then when you come to me, I'm Menzi Masevo. Okay, Menzi mm. Masevo, is this your mom's surname or mm. your dad's surname? Mm. Mm. Well, 
you know, I just grew up as a myself or one myself, and then I will say, seeing that we don't really know, I will ask my ancestors to get in touch with myself. Mm. We ask for permission mm. to now start working on it, okay. right? Then that's when some of the people will say, no, Menzi, though you are Masego, you are actually a Zamin. Mm -hmm. How you got to be Masego is because umama wako wafiga lana, you know, mm -hmm. and we gave you this because mm -hmm. we also mm -hmm. asked for permission to bring you over to us. So if we don't ask for permission as our God, that's when we make people sick. Mm -hmm. Because we're doing us. Mm -hmm. We're not doing what is supposed to be happen to you according to Abagin. Okay. Yes. I hear you. I hear you very well. I'm thinking that for now, this will be all for now. Oh. Uh, there will be a part or two. Okay. <laughs> and we will going to delve into the yes. spirituality. Okay. But, but it, I feel like we've already been touching We've touched, on it. Yes, on it, and, yeah. And then what I'm finding is that you're leaning towards more the traditional practice than your, than your whatever you studied. Is there a reason for that? I use both. You're using more experience than um, technical. I, 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 I use both. There was a time when I was leaning more into what I studied and I would go forward and say, yeah. I'm back. Okay. But they have there, we also have here. Okay. We are glad you went. We learned a couple of things, but you are home. It's a beautiful way to close right now. Uh, I think there's a comment uh, joining. Oh, th thank you. Someone is just thanking somebody for joining us. Thank you very much. Thank you for and having me. We will see each other on the other side. Thank you. Of this. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs>